Hey everyone, Wes Murgard here with WorkRemotelyLiveRemotely.com and today we'll be taking you through some of the top things to do in Valladolid, Mexico. Valladolid is a small city located in the Yucatan Peninsula with a population of about 50,000 people. It's easily accessible from nearby Cancun by bus or car. During my stay, we rented a car from the Cancun airport and made the two hour drive ourselves. If you're vacationing in Cancun, I'd highly recommend either renting a car or booking a tour to visit Valladolid as it will be the highlight of your trip. We stayed in Valladolid for three days and we used it as a jumping off point to visit Chichen Itza and some of the nearby cenotes. If you're interested in learning more about Chichen Itza or the cenotes we visited, I'll be posting some videos on those experiences and leaving links to them in the video description. There are some nice hotels in the city if that's your preference, but usually when I travel internationally, I enjoy staying in Airbnbs as you get a better feel for the local culture. We stayed at a beautiful 300 year old Airbnb located directly on the plaza surrounding the convent of San Bernardino de Siena. The nearly 500 year old convent is now listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Cultural Site and is absolutely beautiful. The inside now functions as a museum, which you can also explore. There's a large grassy park area directly in front of the convent where locals come to hang out and relax. Make sure to get a picture in front of the giant Vital Lead sign if you're in the area, you can't miss it. One evening when we were walking back to our Airbnb, we heard loud music coming from a nearby rooftop, which led us to a really cool bar and restaurant called Los Frappes, which is located directly across from the convent. It's a three-story bar and restaurant located directly on the square. We sat on an open air roof where they had live music, drinks, and food. It was an awesome experience and I'd highly recommend checking it out. If you're trying to figure out exactly where to stay in Valladolid, pretty much anywhere along Calle 41A is going to be a safe bet. The road almost perfectly links the convent to El Parque Francisco Canton, which is the main town square and to Cenote Zasi. Along the road, you'll come across tons of shops and restaurants. The area is perfectly safe and welcoming to tourists. We didn't have a single bad experience during our three day stay. The city center is a short 10 minute walk from the convent area. There's a large park area and square consisting of a large fountain, plenty of seating and vendors selling local street food, refreshments, ice cream and crafts. Around the exterior of the park, there are tons of shops, restaurants, bars and hotels. We stop by the square each evening to hang out, relax, and try out the different street food vendors. My advice would be to try all the street food that you can because everything that we had at the square was absolutely amazing. You really won't be disappointed and you'll really enjoy kind of immersing in the local culture and hanging out amongst all the locals in the area. The cathedral towers over the square and is absolutely beautiful to look at. If you're interested, it is free to pop in and look around, although you can't really get too far inside. We did stop by several really awesome restaurants in the area. I'm not gonna deep dive into each one of them in the video, but I will leave a link down in the description below so you can check them out. Be sure to check those out. I'll include my thoughts on each one along with links so you can find them more easily when planning your visit to Valladolid. Given the climate in this region, you'll find that most restaurants have beautiful outdoor patios, rooftops, or sidewalk seating. Last but not least, if you continue walking another five to 10 minutes east of the downtown city center, you'll come to Cenote Zasi. No visit to Valladolid is complete without a visit to Cenote Zasi. It is absolutely beautiful. Of the three cenotes we visited on this trip, this was by far my favorite. Cenotes are massive sinkholes formed when limestone bedrock in the earth collapses, exposing a large body of water underneath. It is basically a large community swimming pool. When we visited, the entrance fee was only 30 pesos or about $1.50 in US. Keep in mind the restroom at Zasi and in other parts of Valladolid do require a small fee. I think it was like five pesos, so it's not expensive, but you do wanna have some cash or coins on you for that reason, just in case. The cenote was such a fun experience. You can swim in the water, get some really cool photographs. There's the opportunity to do some local cliff jumping and there's also a restaurant located in the cenote but we ended up grabbing dinner back around the square instead also you'll find locals selling crafts in the area Valladolid is such a beautiful city and an excellent way to immerse yourself in the maya culture if you're planning a trip to one of the resort towns such as cancun playa del carmen or tulum i'd suggest spending two to three days here on the front end of your trip it also serves as a great jumping off point to visit chichen itza which is a more manageable 40 minute drive west of Valladolid. There are also several cenotes in the area so you can plan day trips around those as well. I assure you this will be the highlight of your trip to Mexico. I hope you enjoyed the video. 
Once again, I'm Wes Murgard with WorkRemotelyLiveRemotely.com. Be sure to check out some of our other travel guide content as well. Thanks again for watching.